Hi everybody! In this video we are going to learn about a test cross and find out what it is and what it's used for. Okay, so before we think about how we do a test cross, we want to know why we need to do a test cross. So if we imagine that we've got um, a gene which codes, in this case, will code, code for eye colour. Now, for any gene, we know that if we have the dominant uh, phenotype, so in this case, brown eyes are the dominant colour, we know that by looking at the phenotype, we can't tell what the genotype is. So if this is um, brown is the dominant, then it could be a homozygous dominant or it could be a heterozygous. We don't know which of these genotypes this individual has just by looking. So the reason we do a test cross is so that we can find out what the genotype is for this particular gene that shows the dominant phenotype. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, let's just think about the theory behind what would happen if we had um, a genotype that was heterozygous or homozygous for our dominant allele. So here is our first individual. So this is our individual with brown eyes, and we don't know what the genotype is. What we're going to do is we're going to do a test cross, which means we're going to cross it with an individual in this case with blue eyes, because blue eyes is the recessive phenotype. So the reason we do this is because although we don't know what the genotype is for the brown eyes, we do know that if this is the recessive phenotype, it must have this genotype. So we always know what the genotype is for an individual that's showing the recessive phenotype. So this is what we're trying to find out. So in a test cross, we're going to cross with the recessive phenotype and we're going to see what offspring phenotypes we get. And we're going to compare the offspring phenotypes that we get when we actually do the cross, when we breed the individuals together or, or get them to reproduce, and compare it against the theory. What would we expect to get if we had a particular genotype? So because there are two possible genotypes for our brown eyes, then let's have our second possibility over here. So our brown eyes there, and then again, we cross it with the blue eyes. So if we're saying that we, this is the theory, we don't know what our genotypes are, but we know there are two possibilities. So let's find out what we would expect to get. And here are our gametes. So because this is homozygous and we're looking at ratios, we don't actually have to write both of them out. So I'm just going to put one capital B in there because that's the only kind of gamete there's only one possible kind of gamete that this individual with this genotype could produce and then that's the same for our recessive phenotype that's the only type of gamete it can produce with our heterozygous individual there are two possible gametes and again little b is the only gamete that this could produce so these are the two possibilities we could have these gametes combining or we could have these gametes combining so what would we expect to get what would our offspring genotypes be? If we do a quick Punnett square, then we can see that the only possible genotype for offspring, if the uh, brown-eyed individual was big B, big B, the only possible offspring would be heterozygous. However, if our individual was big B, little B, so if our parent with the unknown genotype, if that, un un if that unknown genotype was the heterozygous genotype, then we could expect to see two different genotypes in our offspring. And one of those genotypes would be the recessive genotype. So if we were doing this in reality, we wouldn't, again, we wouldn't know the genotypes of our offspring by looking at them. So what we would look at is the phenotypes. So we go straight to the offspring phenotypes because that's what we would see and that's what's going to tell us um, the answer to our, our question of what the parent genotype originally was. So, as we said, there's only one genotype, so all of the offspring would be brown if the parent had the homozygous dominant genotype. But if you do the cross and you find that there are approximately 50% with the recessive phenotype, the only way they could have that recessive phenotype is if the parent had the recessive 
allele. So when you do a test cross by crossing with the recessive phenotype, you look at the offspring phenotypes. If you see the recessive phenotype in the offspring, that tells you that the original parent must have been heterozygous because it had to have had one of these recessive alleles. And that's a test cross.